hi welcome back to my channel today i am doing a review of hall's moving castle by diana Wynne jones this is the second book that i've read in 2021 and i really really enjoyed it now i have to admit that i was a little bit scared going into this book because i had been putting it off for quite a few years i don't know why but i wasn't really expecting the prose to be like that amazing i wasn't expecting the world building to be that amazing and I think that's kind of because I was expecting for the book to fall flat in comparison to the movie. But much to my surprise, the prose was really amazing. The world building was really, really amazing. Diana Wynne Jones has this writing style where it's just like very energetic and very colorful. And that's very characteristic of a lot of children's books authors, but it's not easy to do regardless. So I thought that the world building was really colorful. Right from the first page, I was like, this is really good prose. I like the setup. I like how the author is just kind of transitioning us into to the meat of the story. But now I'm going to address the three things that I think that this book did so much better than the movie. There are some weaknesses in comparison to the movie and I'm going to address that later. But the first thing that this book did so much better than the movie in my opinion was the character personalities. Everything about this book is energetic. The prose, the world building, there's just this vivaciousness to this book and all of that is just like really embodied within the character of Sophie. She is very mature, she is very thoughtful, but at the same time I really did not expect this character to be as hot-headed as she was. I do think that you get glimpses of this in the movie but I think that the book did a better job of showing a more flawed version of Sophie because she is someone who is very mature. She's very mature, but she's in a certain situation where she can't speak her mind. She's kind of confined in a certain situation. And so she's like, whatever, I'm going to make do with what I have, but I'm not going to hold back on the other things that she can't express. She can't talk about this one thing. And so she's going to speak her mind on everything else, right? <laughs> and so she is very hot tempered. She's very spicy in this book. And I really love that about her. On the other hand, Howell is a very romantic gentleman in the movie, but in the book, he is way more childish. And I have to say, I do like this version of Howell better than the movie because the movie, it just kind of romanticized certain things and therefore some of the character personalities were a little bit watered down, perhaps a little bit. I think the Hayao Miyazaki style of filmmaking is he often doesn't really explain his world building. He doesn't really explain character motivations. And I really like his style of showing, not telling. But at the same time, I will admit a little bit that I couldn't really marry this idea of Howl being very like mature and gentlemanly and romantic. But then on the other hand, he can also be like having a tantrum about his hair. The movie presents two different sides to Howl and I couldn't really marry the both sides of them. Whereas I think with the book, the book makes so much more sense because the book presents Howl as being this woman Womanizer. He's trying to be cool. He's trying to be dashing. But then when he comes back home, he's being this airhead. He's having immature fights with people. I love that interpretation of Hall because he is very gentlemanly at times. He is very kind. He is very considerate in the book. But then at the same time, he's kind of an airhead, which leads to him doing a lot of like thoughtless things, saying thoughtless things. As a result, this book does such a great job of bringing Sophie and Howell's unique personalities to life. Sophie, she has way more spice. She is a lot more like personality driven and then you also have Howell who's just like very very like airheaded he's just kind of really childish and both characters just made me laugh so so much now the second thing that I enjoyed more about this book than the movie was the romance I think that the romance is really beautiful in the movie. The movie does a much more like good job of making me kind of like swoon. But I have to say that the chemistry between Howl and Sophie in the book is so much better. It's a little bit more flawed. It's a little bit more hot tempered. I think there's actually a point where Sophie throws a bucket at Howl's head and <laughs> I nearly die laughing. Um, and that's not something that you get from the movie. I think the movie did a better job of romanticizing it, building the romance in a way that's just like very romantic and gentle. It's a little bit more subtle and I thought it was a little bit more mature take but I think seeing a more chaotic side to this romance was something that really really entertained me and I would have to say that's actually my favorite thing about this book. I do have a critique for the romance in this book which I'm going to talk about later but overall I just feel like Howl and Sophie had so many more conversations and a little bit more like butting heads and like really figuring each other out before they become lovers. And so I did personally feel like the book was a little bit more compelling in terms of the romance. And that is not to say that a romance is only good when two characters are fighting. That's not the case. But I think it's really rare to see a cat and dog sort of dynamic between two lovers and then it not be toxic. A lot of people, I think when they read books nowadays, they're like, oh, this is a very toxic relationship. But 
Sophie and Howell, it feels like they're like perfectly matched. Like they are bickering like cats and dogs, but then at the same time, they get along really well. And I really like that dynamic where they're just kind of going at each other's throats. And yet at the same time, like they have this consideration for one another. And so I thought that the book did a better job of like making the characters more individualistic and then building the chemistry in a way that was more realistic as well. The third thing that I think that the book did better than the movie was the family dynamics. The movie, it omits a lot of the backstories and that's kind of a smart decision, but Sophie has this relationship with her sisters, which is not seen in the movie. And so I was very surprised reading the book because I didn't really expect her sisters to play a big role emotionally, but you can tell that the characters of her sisters, like Letty and Martha, they're very individualistic. They're very different from one another. And yet you could see genuine concern in their own ways for Sophie. And Sophie in her own way, she has this love for her sisters that was very very touching. On top of that you get Sophie's relationship with her stepmother and how that relationship to some extent takes a toll on Sophie and her feelings of like feeling a little bit used perhaps. I thought that was a really good setup for that character because you can see her motivations right from the start. The other family dynamic that I really enjoyed was Howell, Calcifer, and Matthew. There's a moment when Calcifer, the fire demon, he is exhausted one day due to Sophie and Howell, he's just like so freaking mad at Sophie because he's like why the hell did you make Calcifer do these crazy things to exhaust him? And then when the fire demon does come back to life, Howell is like, hey, like, are you okay? And like Sophie watching from the sidelines, she's observing how close the bond is between Howell and Calcifer. They might have times where they bicker, but at the same time, you can tell that they have this like affection for one another. And I thought that was a really nice and heartwarming scene. The other scene that I really liked was Matthew talking about how Howell adopted him when he was a kid. Matthew, aka Markle in the movie, he's aged up in the book, so he's like a teenager in the book. Up until this point, Howell had only been kind of portrayed as being very selfish, as being someone who just kind of does things a little bit randomly. And yet when Matthew talks about Howell, he says like Howell, he didn't notice Matthew for like a week or so after adopting him or whatever, but it's because Howell is airheaded and it shows, oh, like Howell did adopt Matthew because he is kind and he did feel pity for this young boy who was an orphan. But at the same time, it just kind of shows that Howell is still kind of an airhead, right? And it's just a really heartfelt moment because it's just like Matthew you can speak about Howell's faults in a way that's kind of like a good thing or like it's kind of like forgivable. Matthew is just saying that's just who Howell is, you know? He is very kind but he can also be airheaded at the same time but he doesn't really mean that in like a negative way. He doesn't really say that Howell is a worse person because of those qualities. And so the family dynamics in this book were just a lot better than the movie in my opinion. The movie did suck a few family elements in favor of the romance, whereas the book favors the family dynamics more and then just kind of puts the romance to the back. And I kind of appreciate that because I understand that a lot of people love the romantic stuff. I myself love the movie because it makes me swoon. It just kind of makes my heart beat. The romance is just very, very dreamy and romantic and gentle. But I do like it when family elements are included in a romance. So I have to say that I think that the family dynamics in the book were so much better because not only is the Howell, Calcifer, and Matthew dynamics so much more like heartwarming in the book, I really like the backstory of Sophie and her sisters, Letty and Martha. You can tell that they have a lot of concern for their older sister, Sophie, because she is so kind and they don't want her to be used by people and vice versa because Sophia is constantly thinking about her sisters and how they might be seduced by Howell and she's like, no way I'm going to let this womanizer like touch my sisters, you know? And it's just like, again, the family, I think, is more prioritized over the romance. And that's something that I did really appreciate about the book. Because I think the movie was just so romance-based, whereas the book is very, like, family-based, I think. So yeah, I think ultimately the vivacious characters and just the really vivacious romance between Sophie and Howell, how flawed these characters are, and then on top of that to have this really good element of family between Sophie and her sisters as well as Howell and his little family, I think that the setup of the book was ultimately a lot better than the movie in a lot of ways. But where the book kind of falls a little bit short of the movie in my opinion 
is the finale. It was not emotionally driven because I think that the events of the book were a lot more like linear. It was very action packed. It was very plot driven. Things just happen very quickly. And so as an adult, I would have preferred a more emotional wrap up because ultimately the finale of the movie and how emotionally driven it is, it makes it a better well-rounded story compared to the book. And specifically one of the things in the finale that I think was more compelling in the movie was the villain, aka the Witch of the Waste. The book made the Witch of the Waste a lot more mustache twirling villain. She was a lot more straightforward. She was kind of like murdering people like the left and right. Whereas I think the movie did a better job of like making her ambiguous, making her redeemable. And that's kind of where me having watched the movie before reading the book was a disadvantage to the book. I had to watch the movie first again and then like to see the Witch of the Waste be like redeemed in the movie. But then in the book, she's just like straight up evil and then she just kind of dies at the end. I think that's kind of where the ending of the book did disappoint me. On top of that, I think that the events at the very end, it just kind of happened a little bit too quickly. And one of the things that really did happen a little bit too quickly was the romance. Again, I love the chemistry between Sophie and Howell in the book so much more than the movie because it's a lot more gritty, it's a little bit more flawed, but I don't feel like the romantic sort of transition was done that well at the ending. It could have been done so much better. The ending implies that Howell and Sophie are like lovers now, but it genuinely only occurs in like the very last page. So that's kind of where the book falls short because it's not really... It's just done very, very quickly. Again, I understand it's a children's book. I'm not expecting it to be like a masterpiece. I'm not expecting the book to be super, super lengthy, but considering how hefty the setup of this book was, it could have done with a hefty sort of climax to kind of match it and to balance that out. Not only that, considering how Sophie and Hal's dynamic was mostly like this bicker banter sort of thing going on, by the middle of the book, we should have seen a bit of a change in their relationship. We should have seen more sweet moments between the two characters, but even like up until the very end, their relationship is a little bit like hostile at times and so for them to become lovers at the very very end it just was like wow like really it just kind of made it feel like almost Howell and Sophie are able to be together simply because Sophie escaped her certain bodily predicament it kind of feels like because she changed back and now she's pretty like you know that's why Howell falls in love and that's I'm not saying that's what it necessarily came off as but it could be almost like interpreted that way. And so ultimately, if you ask me whether I like the book better or whether I like the movie better, I will tell you that I like the chemistry and I like the characters better so much more in the book because the characters were not watered down. They are vivacious. They are just like really attacking you with their personalities. And so I just felt their characters just like popped off the pages. Whereas the movie made it a lot more romantic. And this was both a positive and a negative for the movie, I think, because again, personally, I liked how bombastic the character personalities are. But at the same time, it could be perceived as a little bit unrealistic. Whereas the movie did a good job of like toning it down to the point where the characters are very heartfelt. They're very mature. And as a result, you just don't feel like the transition from strangers to lovers between Howell and Sophie you don't feel like that was a stretch because both of them weren't really quite mature to start with. And so the movie, it just really focuses a lot more on the romance and not only that, also the war. It amps up the plot. It amps up a lot of war aspects. So you have both like the really fluffy, beautiful sort of romantic thing to make you swoon. But then on the other hand, you also have the war aspect to kind of make it a little bit more cerebral, to make it a little bit more serious. And so combine the two together and then you're going to have a climax that is really quite emotional. And that's kind of where I feel like the movie was more well-rounded than the book. I just personally felt that the movie was a lot more like emotionally satisfying and there was just a lot more catharsis to the movie because the war thing was just like a huge arc in that movie. And then not only that, Howell and Sophie having this romantic beautiful thing going on, it culminates in a very emotionally juicy finale. And on top of that, I think that the villain redemption was very beautiful. The Witch of the Waste, she plays a big role in the finale. And even at the very, very end, when she hands something to Sophie, it's just emotionally satisfying all around. Whereas again, the book is a lot more linear. It's a lot more straightforward. It's a little bit more like plot driven. But then the emotional aspects are not really like milked in my opinion. And that's kind of where I have to say that I kind of do still feel like the movie is better. 
but the world building, the backstories, the character personalities, the banter between the characters in the book is kind of like way better. And I honestly would have said that the book was so much better than the movie if only the ending of the book had been a little bit more like juicy, a little bit more fleshed out. And then if like the enemies to lovers between Sophia and Howell was done a little bit more smoothly. That's kind of where I have to say that I do think that the movie is still a little bit better. But other than that, everything else about the book, I think personally, I like better. So yeah, if you have not read the book or if you've not watched the movie, I would highly recommend doing both because I think that the book is a little bit more like exciting, but the movie is a little bit more like cerebral. I think that's a better way to put it. The book is like this romantic comedy where the characters are a little bit childish, they're a little bit flawed, they have like episodes where things just kind of happen and it's just like really really funny episodes, whereas the movie, the characters are very mature right from the beginning and it's really only two mature characters meeting each other and having this just like very gentle, dreamy relationship that's gonna make you swoon. Both of them are fantastic in their own ways. I know a lot of people say that the book is worse and that's kind of what fed into my you know trepidation about reading the book for quite a long time but I don't know it's like I don't know why people are making such a fuss about like the book not being as good as the movie I think because I know some people again were saying oh like Howell's kind of a dick in the book but He's not really a dick, he's just more of like an airhead, I think. And I think that's what I really, really liked about that character. It's really difficult to straddle that line between unlikable and like flawed. And I think that Diana Wynne Jones did a fantastic job of making Howell and Sophie really, really hot tempered. And yet you just love their guts. So yeah, I think I covered most of the things that I wanted to cover, but I have a few little things that I just kind of want to discuss that might be a little bit spoilery. So, um, if you haven't watched this movie or if you have not read the book, I would recommend checking it out. But now I'm going to go into a little bit of the spoilery stuff. First off, um, I want to talk about the origin story for Howl. I was not expecting that. I was not expecting Howl to be from our own world. Nobody told me about the fact that Howl is from our own world. He's from Wales, basically, I think. And what the heck? I was just like mind boggled for a long time after reading that chapter. I just constantly kept on thinking back to Howl and it's like, he's from our own world? Like how the hell did he come to this fantasy world? And the fact that he can teleport between there and Wales, it's just like, what? It was just really, really interesting. Another moment that I have to say that I really, really enjoyed was Howell throwing a tantrum over his pink hair, which is exactly what happened in the movie, but he throws a tantrum over this, right? And then the next day, Sophie sees him like whistling and he's just like in a terrific mood. And then he just like randomly just like airheadedly says to Sophie, like, I think I like my hair so much better. Like he's just like <laughs> he's just like so happy about the fact that his pink hair is just like really, really pretty now. One day he's just like crying on on and on and about it, and then the next day he's just like gosh so pretty it's like he's so funny um and then again sophie throwing a bucket at hall's head was one of my favorite moments the other um thing that i really enjoyed was the scarecrow i think the movie made the scarecrow to be this prince i think the missing prince i think but then the book it was actually meant to be the prince justin and wizard Sullivan at the same time so that was kind of interesting the fact that the Witch of the Waste basically like cut off their heads from their bodies and then like morphed them into a scarecrow, it's like that is genuinely a little bit creepy. <laughs> like that's really dark. I was not expecting that because again, in the movie, you see and hear that the Witch of the Waste is this evil character, but then you don't really see her doing anything evil. But then in the book, you see her actually like killing people. Like you see her killing hell's mentor oh and the fire demon for the witch of the waste i think that was really interesting miss angorian i think it was really interesting that she was the fire demon um the fact that fire demons can kind of take different forms i suppose and she was miss angorian she's like the final villain in the end i, th I thought that was just really interesting and it's really interesting also how the witch of the waste you know how in the movie, like how Howell's old mentor, the teacher figure, who was kind of almost like the villain of that movie, you know how she says like, oh, the Witch of the Waste was this once like this very beautiful young woman, but then she let her heart be consumed by her fire demon and then she became evil. And you know, in the movie, again, it doesn't really explain certain things and that's kind of Miyazaki's style of storytelling, which I really, really enjoyed. But I can see now reading the book what that meant because in the book, it really does show how the Witch of the Waste was consumed by her fire demon and she did lose her sense of self. 
and she truly did become an evil in the end. Whereas in the movie, I think it was kind of the opposite message, where Sophia is saying, no, hell is never going to become evil. Like, it doesn't matter whether he has his heart or not, or something like that. Like, it's kind of that message in the movie. But the book straight up does go with that message of saying, if you let your heart be consumed by a fire demon, you're generally definitely going to become evil. So I thought that was a really interesting comparison. Another thing was Fanny, Sophie's stepmother. I really liked her at the beginning, but then Martha sowed seeds of doubt within Sophie's mind about Fanny and whether Fanny is like you know, using her or whatever. And I'm not sure if that was ever confirmed by the end because in the end, Sophie feels bad that she ever doubted Fanny, right? But I don't know, like Fanny did seem like she was a good mother figure, but then you see her being kind of airheaded or she's kind of overworking Sophie to some extent. And then when Sophie asks for her wages and whatever, like Fanny completely glosses over that. So I don't know. I personally don't know. And again, I just kind of want to discuss how like Howell, like his origin story, that was like one of the most like mind-blowing aspects of this book because I really was not expecting that to happen. But Howell, his name is actually like Howell, right? H-O-W-E-L-L -L instead of Howell. I am very interested in knowing how that came to be because he apparently was just a normal guy living in our own world. But then he wrote a thesis on like witchcraft or whatever it is. Like he he wrote a he studied in that area, and basically it's implied that he was able to find a door or find some sort of way to this fantasy land, and then he becomes like the greatest wizard of that land. It's just like it's really interesting. I think I kind of wanted to know more of that backstory. I do wonder if the later books are gonna kind of cover that. How did this come to be? And how is it that Howell is able to maintain both lifestyles while well, skipping back and forth from his childhood home into this fantasy land? It's like, does he... <laughs> how in the world does this happen? I kind of would have liked to have seen more of his take on that and how he personally felt about being able to skip back and forth because because I think it's really funny how he's considered like a loser in his own world, but then in this fantasy world, he's like this great wizard, right? And it makes me wonder, does his sister know that he's a wizard or does she think that he's just completely out of his mind? Um, I don't know. I personally would have liked to have seen the modern elements be more incorporated into this book a little bit more because that was a part that I was just like really, really interested in. I was like, how did this ever come to be? Like, this is the stuff that I'm really curious to find out. But unfortunately, the book didn't really explore more of it, but it didn't really need to. So yeah, thanks for watching this review. I might have rambled a lot in this review because this was not one of my traditional reviews where I'm just like trying to structure everything. Um, I feel like I did a lot of like comparison sort of thing, but I'll have to see in the editing whether I rambled a little bit too much or not. Yeah, thanks for watching my review and good night.